Over the years, I've built a lot of simple spline animation rigs in Cinema 4D that I often use for camera tracks, animation of objects, or really anything. I'm gonna show you how you can remake these in Unreal Engine so that you have the flexibility of using these in sequencer and previewing your animations and camera moves in real time. We're gonna start off in Cinema 4D and I'm gonna show you, this is a common rig that I set up when I'm using for animation. What I have here is a spline set up and I've got a null tracking along the length of this spline. And I use this a lot, whether I'm looking to animate characters, objects, or cameras especially, it's really helpful. This is the basic setup that I make in Cinema 4D. So we have our basic spline, we've got this empty object that we're pretty much just using as a cart or a container, and we're using the align to spline tag, and this is just going to allow this to stick to it. So we have the option of keeping this facing along the spline, which is what I'm going to want. So that way as we move forward, you can see this nulls facing forward. And if we turn this off, it's respecting the position or, the, or it's respecting the rotation of this object. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna build this in Unreal. So I have this simple scene and I'm for the sake, I'm, I'm gonna show you how we set this spline rig up and then I'm gonna show you how I use this for two different methods afterwards. So what we're gonna do is create a blueprint. We wanna make something that we could reuse over and over um, to have some different functionality. So I'll show you how we'll set that up. So to kick things off, we're gonna do right click blueprint class. And we're gonna select actor. So we'll just call this BP sp Spline Rig. Let's open this up. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is add a spline component to this. So by doing that, we're gonna go up to add, we're gonna type in spline, and we're going to add in a spline. And now we can see that we have this spline component added to this. We have two points, and that's really all we need to start for this point. The next thing we need to do is add in a couple objects that we can utilize. For the sake of this, I chose to use static mesh objects. And the reason I use these, we don't actually need any geometry data in here, but I have the transform options that are in here, and this just kind of mimics a null object in Cinema 4D. Um, you can use actors, you can use other stuff, but this one just worked the best for me. So to recreate the rig for Cinema 4D, we're gonna use Static Mesh. So I'm gonna rename this card. And I'm gonna add in two other things that we can use. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this cart first of all. We're gonna call this target. And I'm adding this in for now because I'm planning on using this as a render target or as a camera focused target eventually. And then we're gonna do one more thing so we can watch what we're doing. We're gonna just add in a cube to start and we'll delete this later shrink this down. This is just going to make sure that this is working the way we want. And once this is all set up, we'll come back and delete this. So I'm gonna put this inside the cart. So we have our spline that we're going to set up and then our cart that we're going to attach to this and everything else that's sitting as a child of this cart is just along for the ride. Okay, so the first step that what we're gonna to wanna to do to this is we're gonna go into the construction script. And this is where we're gonna be testing most of this. Since we're gonna to wanna to use this for the movie render queue and this needs to go at runtime, anything that we make in this construction script needs to also be mirrored over to this event graph. And we could make all this, copy and paste it over, but if you wanna iterate and make changes, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new function. I'm gonna do the plus on this and we'll just call this spline rig functionality sounds good so the first thing that we're going to do now that we're in here then let's start fleshing out how we're going to get this spline rig to work and then we'll go on linking everything up the first thing we need to tell this thing to do is we need to figure out how long this spline is to do that we're going to first import our spline we're gonna get a new node and we're gonna type in get spline length. This is going to determine how long the spline is in the editor whenever we make it and modify it and that'll return this value back. And then in order to get this to travel along the length of this, we're gonna take this return value and we're gonna throw this into a lerp. 
Now it starts off going into point A and point B, but this is actually going to make it go backwards. So I'm just gonna rewire this now and we'll put this into B. So this will be our starting point at the beginning. And the alpha is going to be our value of how we get from A to B, or B to A for this case. So we're gonna pull this out. We're going to promote this to a variable. And we're just gonna call this position. And I'm calling this position is because I'm looking to remake this tag as best as possible. So we have position here, we'll call it position in Unreal. This is a float, which is perfect. That works for what we want. And we're gonna make this public. This means we can actually access this outside of the you know, guts of this blueprint. We're going to expose to cinematics because we wanna animate this. And for this entire blueprint, we need to do this every time we want to animate uh, anything in the construction script and sequencer. We're going to go to class settings, and we need to make sure run construction script and sequencer is checked. Compile this, save it. We now have all of the uh, basic setup that we need for this. So I'm going to clean this up as I go, just so we can kind of see how we're blocking this out. I'm going to see and make a comment. Travel length of spline. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that this is all facing the direction of the spline. So that checkbox that I showed you in Cinema 4D, we're going to build that out right now. Let's bring the spline back in. That's the object we're going to reference. And there's two nodes that we need to get so that we can set the location and the rotation at a specific point along the spline, and we're gonna pipe that into our cart. So the first thing we're gonna do is expand off this. We're gonna type in get location at distance along spline. And then we're gonna take our lerp and run that into there. So this gives us our location. We need to do the exact same thing for rotation. So get rotation at distance along spline. Funnel that guy into there as well. What we're going to do for this is they're both set in local space. This is going to work for the rotation, but since this is going to be the, the spline is going to be throughout this level in different spots, so we're going to want to set this to world. So that way it's referencing that point. And local will be fine because we're just referencing the spline. Uh, yeah, local will be fine. So now to get this to work, the last thing we need to do is we're going to bring in our cart. And the next thing we need to do is we're going to expand this or we're going to add to this and we want to do set world location and rotation. So now we're telling that this card object that we added, we're setting the position. So from our spline data and our rotation data, we're going to set that into here. And this will be our first actual step that we're going to plug in our functionality to. So this, clean this up a bit more. We'll comment this out. C4D tangential. So this is the functionality that we have for that checkbox. Um, and I'm just leaving this all forced on. You could branch this if you wanted to toggle it on and off, but I know that I want this stuff to follow because I can control the rotation independently from a child if I want to. The last main thing that we need to do to this is we need to well, first compile. I guess we'll come into here. We're going to take the spline rig and add it in. So now you'll see we've got our cube here that we can test it. We can select these points and we can move these around. And I'm just holding alt and dragging to create points on this Bezier spline. The last section we need to do is we need to attach the external actor from the level. All right, so we're gonna make a new variable. We're gonna call this attach actor. We're gonna make this public. And under the type, come over here, pull this down and we're gonna call this actor. And let's see, actor type, object reference. So this is what we're going to want to allow us to attach something in the level to this blueprint. So we've got our new attach actor. 
collapse these so we can see. We've got our attach actor variable. Let's bring this guy in. We're gonna do get this. We're gonna right click down this and go to convert to validated get. And the next step is we will take this and connect our information. And then for the is valid, we're gonna expand off and we're gonna type in attach actor to component. Drop this down in here. We're going to take this attach actor and plug it into the target. And we're gonna bring our cart back in. And we're gonna pipe this into the parent. And then the location rule, I tested these out, but we're gonna do snap to target, snap to target, and then scale rule keep relative because we're not using that. And we'll add our comment to this just to clean this up. Attach external actor from level. So now we've got our three main blocks of information that we're looking at. Uh, we've got the length of our spline. We've got the position and rotation of this that we're uh, then applying to this cart that we can add things and attach things to in scene. And we're giving this the functionality that we can now attach something to this. So let's compile, save this out, and we'll go back into our scene. Uh, and there's one thing that I forgot to do. So when I go to scrub this variable, it doesn't work. And that is because And that is because we did all of this inside of this spline rig uh, functionality function. So to get this to work, we're gonna go into our construction script. We're going to take this new functionality that we made and we're gonna plug this in. And before I go any further, I wanna be able to use this in the construction script, but then when we go to render, I need this working in the event graph. So I'm gonna expand this out. We're gonna create a branch. And I'm gonna make one more variable final render and you've probably seen this before we're going to make this public so we can access it and i want this to be a boolean value so this is just going to be a checkbox so when i plug this in so if we do want this to be the final render then we need to decide which it goes so it's false right now because we want to use this in the editor i'm going to copy all this over go into the event graph and we're going to use the event tick which is going to be useful for sequencer. So I'm going to plug this in and now we want our final render to be true. Compile and save. So now when we go out into this scene we're going to check our rig. Final render is off. Now we've got the ability to scrub and animate this and we can keyframe this value inside of sequencer. Okay so we've got our spline rig turned off our cube we've so we don't have to see it because we've got this thing working now and the easiest way I can do this to control rotation independently is we're going to create a basic actor I'm gonna drop this guy in and we'll just call this um, actor handle why not it's not the cart but that's what we're attaching it to um, so if we go to our rigs our we go to our BP spline rig. We're going to twirl this down. And we're going to attach actor handle to this. If we zero this guy out, nope, we don't want that. So our actor handle is now attached. And if we scrub this through, we now have this empty actor that's moving in here. And this is helpful because this rotation is basically mimicking everything that's on the cart. So I can't independently rotate this without it snapping back. But we can take an object drop it inside of this actor and zero it out. And we're just gonna reduce the handle size of that so you can see better. So now when I scrub this through, we now have this hand is moving with it. And if I want to rotate this to be whatever I want, it's now respecting that rotation and it's is it because it's a child of that actor and it's not forcing along the spline. So we now have independent movement of this. And if we really wanted to as well, this starts becoming handy as you'll see later, but you can move this outside and it's still going to respect the position and the location. It's not gonna snap back to it. So you have that extra degree of control that you added to it. So that's our spline rig. Now you can make this, um, attach an actor to it and then you can add other things to it so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I use this for the scene that I had created 
All right, so I'm in this scene and I'll show you how this is set up, but I have two of these same spline rigs that I had created. So I made a first one that I named for camera and then I used the attach function and I attached my cinema camera to it. And there's two ways you could do this. The first one is just attaching this to the spline and it will move along with it. And the other version is, oh, I forgot, we're gonna uncheck final render. So I want these to actually work in the scene. So the first one, as you can see, is just tracking along this spline and basically just control it as is. I also added another version with a handle so that I could actually move this camera to and from. So it's following along this cart, but I can move it up and down. And both of these I just have set enable look at tracking and I set the focus uh, tracking. So the focus is being uh, targeted at the sphere and then the look at is tracking at this camera target that we added into the blueprint. And you could add any other actor that you want in here. But now this camera target, I can move around. Let me see, we'll go on this rig. So as this follows along the spline, the camera is kind of swaying in and out and I can move it either with the spline or just outside of it. And then you can see this camera target is then, it's attached to the spline, but I can move it to the left, up, right, basically any direction to try to offset my composition focus and change my framing. So I'm not forced to look at this sphere the entire time, but I also have perfect focus no matter where this camera goes. So one spline is driving the rotation or the location of this ball that I can then rotate independently to give it the effect illusion of rolling, but it's staying along the spline. And then I have the camera moving as well. So with the same spline rig, I was able to quickly set up animations extremely fast. So as you can see for this simple shot, having this exact same spline rig, you can use a number of times in a number of different ways, but I was able to get this ball moving along this line and also able to control custom camera movements with ease because I can just adjust the length of the spline and I can also rotate the camera and move it as well on top of that to create some pretty custom moves that are oftentimes pretty difficult to do uh, if you're trying to just hand keyframe it. If this video really enriched your life, by all means much appreciated.